All right, so we're going to show you some, uh, some graphical methods for quantitative data. Now, a dot plot is really a simple chart. It's a plot full of dots. And it can be that you have a dot for each observation, or you can have a dot for two, four, five observations, something like that. It's useful for relatively small data sets, uh, small ranges as well. Imagine that these are transport rates. Let's say that you have 50 rates, as you can see it here. Uh, quickly, what's the minimum rate? What's the maximum rate that you observe here? Maximum, maximum is? 109. 109. All right, took a while. The minimum? 62. 52. 52. 52. You know, it took some time to get to that value. Uh, what's the more common data? You know, if you had to guess the mean there, what would be the mean? 70s. 70s. Okay. All right. So let me show you a dot plot. Okay. So now there's no ambiguity. Nobody's going to come up with the 62 as the minimum here. You can also see that 109 is the maximum. What's the range? You quickly can tell you the range, right? Anywhere from 52 to 109. So quickly you can see that it's almost 60. If I ask you the mean now, you still think it's the 70s? 70s, probably too low, right? So uh, maybe more on the 80s or so. I mean, what's the highest, uh, than the, I asked you, the more frequent uh, rate? Yes, yeah, so you can easily see what's the mode there and so on. So this is a dot plot. And the nice thing about dot plots is, as I said, it allows you to visualize the data quickly. Next, I wanted to talk to you about a histogram. And imagine that for the data that we have for transport rates, we select some classes. How many classes? Well, it depends on the amount of data that you have, but anywhere between 5, 10, and 15 classes or so, and so on. And then you can count the frequency that you would observe in each one of those categories. Um, and that would allow you to come up with a histogram. Now, if you are given some data, random data, uh, here's the raw data. What the first thing that you would do is basically sort it out. 46 is the range, so it goes from 12 to 58. Now you can select how many classes. You know, possibly you could say five classes, or you could even say 10, you know, range of five. So there we go. So we select five. So the interval is about 10. Uh, we determine the boundaries. We count the observations, we assign to each one of the classes. Here we have it. And then, as we have the frequency, we can talk about a relative frequency. The only caveat with histograms is that your choice for the number of classes will influence the type of chart that you actually observe. Next, I'd like to actually show you something that is called stem and leaf plots. What you actually do is always sort out the data um, and then the first digits of each uh, data item are arranged to the left of a vertical line and uh, the last digits are on, on the right so you put the units so to speak then each line in the display is a stem and then each digit on uh, the specific data is the leaf so if we would display the data that I was showing you for transport rates, it would look like this. So 52 and 57. And then the nice thing about this as well is that you can immediately see that 70 is the mode, right? So most of the rates fall in that category of the 70s. Um, for most the stem and leaf plots, they would give you a five number summary. They would give you the maximum, the minimum, the middle number, the number in the middle, and then the first quartile and third quartile. We'll talk about it after lunch. Mm -hmm.